Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Artemis by Andy Weir. So Andy Weir is the author of The Martian. This had pretty crappy reviews, and I think the reason for that is that people were expecting another Martian, which was more of like a crossover science fiction success. This is very much more like hard-boiled sci-fi, um, but I did quite enjoy it, spoiler alert. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb on the back. I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... Welcome to Artemis, the first city on the moon. Population 2000, mostly tourists, some criminals. Jazz Bashara is one of the criminals. She lives in a poor area of Artemis and subsidizes her work as a porter with smuggling contraband onto the moon, but it's not enough. So when she's offered the chance to make a lot of money, she jumps at it. Now all she needs to do is plan the perfect crime in one of the most dangerous places in the universe and survive it. So, to the moon. And I just thought this little excerpt here is a good introduction um, of like what the moon civilization looks like here. I plodded through the maze of aluminium corridors to my home. At least it wasn't a long walk. The whole city is only half a kilometer across. I live in Artemis, the first, and so far only, city on the moon. It's made of five huge spheres called bubbles. They're half underground, so Artemis looks exactly like old sci-fi books said a moon city should look, a bunch of domes. You just can't see the parts that are below ground. Armstrong Bubble sits in the middle, surrounded by Aldrin, Comrade, Bean and Shepard. The bubbles each connect to their neighbours via tunnels. I remember making a model of Artemis as an assignment in elementary school. Pretty simple, just some balls and sticks. It took 10 minutes. It's pricey to get here and expensive as hell to live here, but a city can't just be rich tourists and eccentric billionaires. It needs working class people too. You don't expect Jay worth a lot rich bastard the third to clean his own toilet, do you? I'm one of the little people. I live in Conrad Down 15, a grungy area 15 floors underground in Conrad Bubble. If my neighbourhood were wine, connoisseurs would describe it as shitty with overtones of failure and poor life decisions. So they get some coffee and someone goes, uh, you'll love it. And uh, Jazz says, coffee's just a bad kind of tea. Black tea is the only hot drink worth having. This is just lies. Oh, and they talk about their currencies, SLGs, which is short for soft landed grams. Uh, so once SLG, one slug, gets one gram of cargo delivered from Earth to Artemis. It's not technically a currency. Uh, they're not a country, so they can't have currency. Uh, so slugs are like pre-purchased credit, but they're used as a form of currency. And they get some scotch. It's been like dehydrated and then reconstituted with water and eth ethanol. And uh, Jazz says, it tastes like Satan's flaming arsehole. And I just thought this was cool. Um, and this, it talks about how like NASA lost its stranglehold basically. Uh, Fidelis Nugi is simply put the reason Artemis exists. When she was Kenya's Minister of Finance, she created the country's entire space industry from scratch. Kenya had one, and only one, natural resource to offer space companies, the equator. Spacecraft launched from the equator could take full advantage of Earth's rotation to save fuel. But Nugi realised they could offer something more, policy. Western nations drowned commercial space companies in red tape. Nugi said, fuck that, how about we don't? I'm paraphrasing here. God only knows how she convinced 50 corporations from 34 countries to dump billions of dollars into creating KSC, but she did it. And she made sure Kenya enacted special tax breaks and laws just for the new mega corporation. So now Kenya is like the space capital of the world. And uh, we get this, she goes to meet somebody and he goes, uh, you are unmarried and have sex with many men. Yes, I'm quite the harlot. Her son, Isvan, had banged more dudes than I ever had. I resisted the urge to tell her. There is some quite good like LGBTQIA plus representation in here. At least I think so. Obviously I can't vouch for it myself. Um, and then yeah, like the main characters of uh, Saudi Arabian descent as well. So I just thought that was cool. She remembers the first cigarette she had. She said, I, I remember I damn near puked from all the smoke that built up. But hey, when you're a rebellious teen and you think you're making a statement, it's worth it. Take that, daddy. That's basically why I started smoking as well. Well, I've quit now. I only vape. She says, the moon is a nice place to pass out. You hit the ground very gently. We get this great little conversation here between Dale and uh, Jazz's father. So Dale says, I forget, do you hate me because I'm gay or because I'm Jewish? I hate you because you broke my daughter's heart. Uh, we get the, a use of the word flesh boilingly, which bothers me. I don't like uh, ad adjectives or adverbs really. And then on a couple of pages later, we get chlorine gas is lung dissolvingly dangerous. God, I can't stand that. Just say lung, uh, say chlorine gas is dangerous. It can dissolve your lungs. And I just thought this was a cool bit of science. Uh, if you put water, ice water in a saucepan and cook it, the water temperature will stay at zero degrees Celsius until the last ice cube melts. That's very cool. Okay, and then they realize that they've accidentally flooded the city with, uh, with chloroform and everyone just passed out, knockout gas. Um, 
But they like passed out instantly and that's not how chlor uh, chloroform works. Maybe in higher concentrations, I don't know, but when you see people in movies being chloroformed, that's not how chloroform works. It takes like 10 minutes. But fortunately, uh, they say as well, we don't have cars, so no one was operating vehicles at the time. Thanks to our low gravity, no one got hurt fall into the ground. A few scrapes and bruises is all. Um, although three people did go into cardiac arrest from chloroform poisoning. But they get it sorted, so it's all good. So yeah, Artemis by Andy Weir. I thought it was a pretty decent sci-fi novel. It's got a pretty good plot, some great characterization. Um, it's not maybe as high octane or as, as thrilling as The Martian, but it is a pretty decent sci-fi novel. Uh, I mean, I'm an Isaac Asimov fan and it kind of reminded me a lot of Asimov's stuff. Um, there was some interesting science to it as well. I'm not sure how well all of it holds up, um, which is weird because, uh, you know, Weir is kind of known for doing a lot of scientific research, so I assume it does hold up. But anyway, uh, overall, Artemis by Andy Weir, I gave it like a pretty solid 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of Artemis by Andy Weir. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.